Hey guys and gals, this is Jeff again. I'm continuing my series in uh, building a main stage layout from scratch for my Axiom 61 keyboard. And I kind of did a little uh, tweaking off camera. I added these buttons down here. Uh, I shrunk this stuff up, moved this stuff around. Uh, I wanted to show you um, today we're actually going to get a little bit into programming this and setting this up. Um, and then I just was, we're going to add a couple more things. But first I wanted to show you probably my, uh, the most important control. Uh, panel control that uh, Mainstage has, and this has been added in the Mainstage 3, and I'm I'm already in love with it. And it's the smart controls, and uh, generally it's not that smart, and it's not that useful, but where it comes into play is the transform pad, and when you're messing with alchemy, this thing is this thing's pretty killer, because it turns your track pad into a, a you know, a, a, it gives you basically the ability to control, uh, the change your sound on the fly using your using your trackpad and so I really like putting this here and I like having room for it um, so I kinda throw that there um, what, what I also usually like to do is I know I just kinda chunk this thing up day one um, but I'm gonna ungroup this and I'm gonna these these are just basic text uh, text places in parameter text and you can add uh, parameter text down here and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kinda shrink this stuff up um, I, I I like putting in a MIDI activity not a button light, so I'll, I'm going to throw that in there so that we can, uh, so that I can see whether or not it's a good way to troubleshoot. If maybe I'm getting, um, you know, if you're you're getting uh, whether or not you're if you're not if you like if you can't hear anything, it's good to know whether or not you, main stage is even receiving MIDI. And then what I like to do is I like to add a couple more rooms for parameter text, um, a couple more slots. And I'll show you what I do with those in a minute when we actually get to uh, setting this up. Oh, bummer. All right, I'm just going to delete that from now. I, with that selected, I deleted it. Because when we go to regroup it, we'll, we'll get another opportunity for background. And then what are we going to do? We're going to shrink this down. We're gonna, oh, you didn't like that, did you? Shrink you down, move you over here. Do, do, do. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna add two more, two more parameter texts. One there. Let me get stretched out. Eh, there. And then one more. That's nice and big. There we go. Okay. So this gives us four parameter texts and another parameter text over here. Come on, come on. Yep, there you go. Nope. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yep, nope, not move. Resize. It's a little finicky. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these. Do, do, do. Uh, two finger click, group. There we go. And this one I'm just going to, I'm not going to give a panel. Um, but each of these parameter texts, you can change how they look, um, whether you want a frame, you know, you can put a frame around it. Um, generally, I don't care so much about the frame. So that, we'll be able to use those parameter texts to uh, display important information. And then, I am a sucker for meters. Uh, I haven't really found a, a, you know, it's not really one of those things that you really need. Um, but they sure are kind of fun to look at, and uh, they, they, you know, instead of doing that, I'm just going to do a command C here. I'm going to copy this bad boy. Yeah. V. There, that'll like show me my, I'll use those for my main levels. Um, maybe my CPU, I should probably, and then I'm going to throw in a couple of these. Yeah, that's a little too big. Let's see if I can shrink it without, nope. Uh, command Z. Come on, buddy. Shrink, shrink. Oh yeah, there we go. Got it. And then, yeah, CV. There. Like I said, I've got four zones, so you know I'll have a, I'll have a layer for each zone, a fader for each zone. So I just kind of have an idea of what's making what sound. There we go. And so that was not too hard, was it? So let's go to edit. And now the fun part begins. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to save 
Uh, I'd already saved this, but I'm going to save as. We're going to call it something else because I'm tired tired of looking at uh, Untitled Concert. We're going to call it um, Axiom 61 Tutorial How To. And it's very important to organize your um, your files, and you know when you're when you're building layouts, it's good to keep copies. Um, you know, in case you make a mistake, you always kind of want to have a clean copy of something. Um, you know, I find myself creating new concerts all the time and spin-offs and and re tweaking things, and so it's it's really important to to kind of keep a, a trail, if you will. Uh, they don't take up the the just the basic uh, main stage files don't take up that much space, so it's worth it to keep keep them sitting around. First thing I want to do though here is set these up. Like I said, I have four zones. And the way that works is that the Axiom for each zone that's enabled sends out MIDI signals on a different channel. MIDI has 16 channels and MainStage is able to read uh, MIDI data on all of them or individual ones. So what I do is I'm going to rename all of these. So this one is going to only read channel 1 information and I'm going to call it zone 1. This one is going to be zone two, zone two, and it's only going to read channel information on channel two. This one's going to be called zone three, and it's only going to read channel information on channel three. And this one's going to be zone four, and it's going to read channel information on channel four. And this one down here, this little guy, is going to be, I'm going to call it drum kit. Actually, I'm going to call it drums. And this will read channel 10. Now, why channel 10? Because, like I said, I've got these drum keys and percussion information. MIDI, um, MIDI channel 10 is always reserved for drums or, or percussion. And so we're going to set that there. And I don't mess with the rest of that. But that, what that lets me do is when I actually start um, finding the and assigning the, the patches uh, in main stage, when we actually start assigning sounds to these layers, um, it will let us have the the sounds that we need uh, control over the sounds using the correct zones. So I just like double checking zone one, channel one, uh, channel two. This is the name of the keyboard. So later when we go to assign a you know a, a sound in main stage when we go to assign a, a channel strip um, to a MIDI controller, this will be the the keyboard that we'll be assigning it to, so we know which one's controlling it. Zone three is channel three, and zone four is channel four. Okay, I think that's good. Now we're going to come over here to edit. And in edit, this is where we start assigning things. Now, the way this is broken out is that you've got concert level settings. I'm going to go ahead and create one, a new set. You have set level settings, and then you have patch level settings. So if I go ahead and create a new patch, this one's going to be outside the set. So so you can, you can control... Um, Every every little feature here, every one of these layout knobs and buttons can be programmed in either the concert wide, set wide, or patch specific. So generally, um, what I do is I start at the concert level. There are some things that I always know what I want to have happen. For example, this button here says set, and I always want this one to change the set to the previous set. Up is previous, down is next. So we click on the, so we're here in edit. We click on the thing, the little the little button that we want to, to, to map. And this is, this is very intuitive. Anything you want to map, you just click on it. And what pops up is this contextual window down here that says unmapped. So we're gonna start with here, set. That's set up. So what I wanna do is I wanna find the action that says previous set. So I'm gonna go to actions. And I'm going to scroll through this list, and there it is, previous set. This button is going to be next set. Same thing, actions, scroll through the list, next set, patch. So this one's going to be previous patch. Actions, scroll through here. What do we want? Where is it? See it? Previous patch. This one is next patch, actions. Where is it? Next patch. Bingo, we got it. So right right away, we have now have control. So when I punch that button, it's going to change the set up and down. When I punch that button, it's going to change the patch up and down. Um, good. Next thing I like to do is I like to add in my parameters. So this right here, this little one we created, that's going to be an action. 
And what that's going to show us is, where is it? Patch number. Current patch. So this will show me the current patch number. Did I miss it? I might have missed it. It might actually be in here, patch number. Okay, here I like to have the name of my concert. And the way I usually set it up is a worship set. You know, if I'm doing leading from keyboard to Sunday, my concert name will usually be the name of the Sunday. So this just kind of helps me to know concert name, and that sticks throughout. Actions, the next one I put underneath that is... Um, what what have I done before? I think generally what I like to do is um, time and date. Let's see, does it does it put it here? Current time. Yep, yep. And then over here, uh, I like the set name. Current set. And then here, I like the current patch. Oh, there it is. Just missed it. Probably we're shouting down there. I see it. Current, current patch number. That's it right there. So when I select this one, that shows number one. Okay. Now you see here how it says current set, current patch. So what I need to do is I need to click on this. Well, we need to go back to layout because the problem there is layout. See how it says parameter and the number. So that's controlled right here in text labels. It says, what do you want to display, one line or two lines? And right now it's set up to display two lines, the parameter and the value. In this case, the, so in the way that we have it set up, the parameter is set, current set, current patch. But I don't, I know the way I have it set up, that's all, I always know that that's going to be the current set. So I don't need that, I just need the value. And here, same thing. I don't need it to say um, parameter, I just need to see the value. All right, then we go back to edit, and there it says, untitled set, classic electric piano. So that, that right there, we know when we get to perform window, and we go to full screen, I can see right away, just by glancing at my laptop, the time. I can see the, uh, the set that I'm in, which usually I will rename the sets for songs, so I know what song we're doing. I know what the date is, what Sunday it is, and I know um, what patch I'm selected. So... Uh, those are basically just that information I like right off the bat. And we'll do a couple more things before uh, we finish out this video. I just want to show you real quick. Basically, that's though that's how you assign things within main stage. Again, I'm going to go back to these are concert level settings. I want to adjust my volume. So right here, this is going to be my master output volume. Actions. Where are we at? Should be here somewhere. Oh, no. What am I thinking? It's not in here. It's going to be master. So this is your master. Um, nope, sorry. Output level. That'll show me the output level for my output. Output 1 and 2. Okay? So right away now I've got... Um, it, these are my... These are basically all the concert level settings that we that we will have. And, uh, and from here on out we'll be dealing with specific specific patches and sets um, and I'll, I, I'll walk you through in a future video I'll walk you through how to actually create a, a set um, and, and what I do to, to create different sets but this is this is it we created our layout from scratch so thanks for watching and uh, feel free to leave a comment um, let me know if you'd like to see if I left anything out that you'd like to know how to do or let me uh, know what you'd like to see next uh, have a great have a great day bye